to another edition of Wrestling Sheet Radio. I'm your host, ProWrestlingSheet.com, Editor-in-Chief Ryan Satin, here with my guest co-host this week, James McKenna. Oh, hello. Here in your rainbow-haired glory. It's Welcome so to good. Los Angeles. They, I, I you fit in perfectly with that hairdo. I have to. It's so good. You look like you could be a, a SoundCloud rapper with that hair. I like it. Oh. You should so, try that while you're here in L.A. That's going to fail miserably, and I'm very excited. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, uh, this week, Jamie's in Brazil still, I believe. Of course he is. Uh, yeah, I, he, he's he's there for some uh, Black Eyed Peas benefit thing. I don't know. I, I just saw he posted a cool video where it was Will I Am. Um, he was he was um, zip lining during the performance, so like he's like above the crowd zip lining while he's singing Black Eyed Peas. Oh, songs. for a second, I thought you meant Jamie was zip lining no, no, no. over, and I was like, Will what is I happening? Am was zip lining during the show that he was performing in. It was awesome, perfect. Um, uh, Kevin, I believe, I believe, I think Kevin and. Uh, Eli are both sick, but because last week I didn't do a wrestling sheet radio, there was no way I wasn't going to do another one this week because there's way too much going on. And now you're stuck with me. And now I always have James to, to come in since he's here in Los Angeles. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't do an episode last week. Um, for those of you who've seen it on the YouTube channel, I did a ton of interviews, so I feel less bad about it because I did still provide content for those of you who really wanted it. There's a bunch of interviews I did at the Performance Center last week with uh, Triple H, Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, uh, Kyle O'Reilly, uh, Bobby Fish, Bianca Belair, Street Profits, Johnny Gargano, Candice LeRae. Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle. I knew I was going to leave one out. A hey. uh, bunch of stuff that I put up there the past week. I will be adding it to the podcast feed probably tomorrow, um, but I wanted to try and get as many video views as possible first. But lots of fun stuff on there. Uh, I, I, I guarantee you guys will dig it. I tried my best to not cut anyone off since I only had one microphone anyways, so I promise you, I, I think you'll dig it. Go check it out. It's on the Wrestling Sheet YouTube channel. Uh, YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. But... Sorry, I didn't mean to mess with the microphones there. I know it just capped out right there. I heard it. I apologize for yelling. I'm trying to get quieter when talking into microphones since I heard myself doing it in the PC interviews. But um, I now that AEW Dynamite is out there and, and we have these Wednesday Night Wars, uh, it's Wednesday Night War, right? War. It was singular war. Because I always one... hate with Monday Night War or wars. It's always like you see people say it different ways. It's the Wednesday Night War. So it was the Monday Night War. It wasn't the wars. Like, it's weird. Like, one would think you would have called it World Wars 2 because of the multiple wars happening. And this one, there's a singular war. So it's just Wednesday Night War. Wednesday Night War. Yeah. Um, They're getting the plurals wrong on it, and it hurts me. It it frustrates me, too. Trust me. That's why I wanted to clarify there. So um, I, 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 you know. I'm still going to try to talk about the top stories of the week on this show, um, but I'm going to limit it a little bit because I do think we need to have a place where we talk about uh, Dynamite and NXT for the time being until I figured out a very firm weekly schedule. So let's kick it off. Let's talk first about AEW Dynamite. Yes. Uh, I thought AEW Dynamite, uh, out of the two shows last week, I do think, or this week, sorry, um, I do think AEW Dynamite was the better show last night. Everything, it was, I will say, as opposed to episode one of Dynamite, exceedingly better. Like, the pacing of it just felt better. Correct. I agree. We were talking about some booking decisions, and that was, in its own right, a little weird. But at the end of the day, the show itself was paced way better than previously before. Yeah, and, and then I'll, I'll kick it off with my number one gripe of the whole show, because, yes, I did like Dynamite better last night, but I will say there are some booking decisions that... I, that I'm trying to think of the right wording. I just didn't. I, I don't say I didn't enjoy, but I befuddling. That were confusing to me. Yeah. Um. And, and I think right off the bat, it was Private Party versus the Young Bucks because this was such a great match. I, I I loved this match so much. I think that Private Party have so much promise. I think that the Young Bucks are 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 obviously one of the best tag teams in professional wrestling. Um. They're one of the re- they're, they're a huge part of the reason why any of this is happening for AEW, and so. In my, look, I loved the match. It was great. It was killer. Uh, they had, you know, a match that you don't, nor- a tag match that you don't normally see on wrestling TV right now. You know, a, a fifteen minute just like killer match like that where there, it was like a pay per view level match. Yeah. You know, um, but to me, the frustrating thing about this is that while I think Private Party are great, I don't think they're at the level yet, and so I, I, I. I, I so, 
I wouldn't even argue at the level. It's just one of the, like, the cat's out of the bag far too early for yeah. any of this stuff. To me, this was the end of the tournament. Like, this should have been the end of the tournament. Either, the pri- private party making their way, the, the, making their way through it all the way. Yeah. And then Young Bucks obviously doing the, you know, the wins that you thought they were going to get in order to get to this match on pay-per-view, which would have been a huge upset when the private party beat them. And it would have been a way bigger deal on pay-per-view and put them over put Private Party over in a much bigger way than just beating them the first chance they had up against them. I just didn't understand the point, the, the, it, the thought process in that. That's where I kind of kind of came to like this internal conflict of I did love it. Like Private Party beating the Young Bucks is such a fun, fun kind of twist on every, because you just kind of walked in assuming the Bucks were going to win. The problem is it kicked off the tournament, like surprises out of the bag. Like, and you could argue that, yeah, sure, the rest of the tournament, like, oh, it's anyone's game now, which, yeah, I guess kind of, but at the same point, like, okay, so Private Party needs to make it to the finals, right? Like, they can't just, like, win one match and then lose the... Well, it's utterly wasted if they if they don't win the show now. If they don't, yeah. Sorry, if they don't win the tournament now, it's completely wasted, in my opinion, because they beat the biggest tag team in the tournament, so now it's like, well, they beat them and then they didn't win the tournament, so what is that? How does that make... The, it almost and to me, it, it demeans the level of the Bucks, and I get it because I know what everyone's going to say. I know what all the comments are going to say to this. I know what everyone's going to tweet me <laughs> after seeing this. They're going to say, Ryan, this is to show that they're not just putting themselves over and that they're, you know, the, the, the mission statement of younger, fresh teams, it, 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 they're, they're living true to it and, and, and that kind of thing. And I get it. But you could have done that booking wise in the finals and gotten way bigger. Oh, entirely. It would have meant so much like, more for I, everyone involved. I know you're not a sports fan. And it's like when these things happen in sports where like the number eight team beats a number one, everyone loses their minds. But that's the marquee matchup of the tournament. Like at the end of it, like no one cares about the finals because you already. It, being, you know, a Boston fan coming from, like, years back, Yankees beat the Red Sox in the uh, ALCS. No one gave a damn about the World Series. Everyone's like, okay, the the big match already happened. So this was, to me, the big match of it. Like, what other surprises are left? Yeah. I, I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. I, th- this should have been the end of the tournament, and, in my opinion. But I also understand they want to, like, put these dope matches on. I get it. Yeah. I just feel like booking-wise... You like blue, and I get well, it. Now the young bucks get their, they get their, you know, win back. Then they we need a rubber match well, for the tag titles, yeah, whatever. But, but like, like to me, why even have the young bucks in it to begin with? Like if you're gonna do that right off the bat, and I get it to like maybe propel private party a little bit. At the same time, you gave Dark Order a buy. And aside from that, Angelico and Jack Evans are screwing off on the sideline. Like they got voted off on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, what, what? Well, and you know what's also one of the things to me that's that's. That, well, like, okay, let me it, ask. It's it, just like with private party. Are you telling me that type of match? I get with the young bucks. There's a little bit more like, oh, like they beat the young bucks. But like, you're telling me they couldn't have had that exact style of match with Angelico and Jack Evans and have could've. it be as perfect as it was. Like Absolutely. to me, Angelico Jack Evans would have been a better first round match. Yep. And everyone, like, I would have felt the same way. I would, walked out of it with, like, Private Party looked like goddamn champions. Well, like, that's that's one of my things yeah. with the whole this whole show, kind of. And as much as I enjoyed it, uh, the the booking idea, to me, it, was, it, 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 it felt like we were going... It felt like the viewer is expected to have already accepted these people. It's almost like they think the viewer's been watching these people for a very long time. Uh, you know, MJF... And we'll get to it. To me, doesn't need to be nuanced yet because we haven't even gotten the non-nuanced version of him on TV that often yet. You know, no, we have. Yeah. You know, private party. You know, uh, you, you text me right after with MJF, and I was like sitting there, just kind of stunned, being like, "So he's a good guy." A week at, like, you've had a two-week sample size of this guy on TV. Week one, he comes out and calls everyone idiots, and week two, he comes out and he's just like. Ah, these guys are my friends. And, and I like, feel like what they're trying okay. to do is this like nuanced, like not everyone's bad guy. Not everyone's a good guy. Some guy, good guys like bad guys. It's nuanced, and I get it. But to me, these people need to be established first. Yeah, you like, need to get You it need to get there room. first. Like yeah. to me, you, if you start adding nuance to the MJF character this early, then you've wasted six months of TV that you could, six months to a year of TV that you could have gotten at him before he ever needed to add that nuance. Yeah. He could have come out 
done his Roddy Piper esque talking shit on the fans. He could have done all that stuff, and 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 it'd be great. nobody would have had a problem with it. No, but no, one. I don't think anyone was looking for a more nuanced, uh, which gray area you know is MJF. And I get it. And we and, and I we'll, we're talking about it anyway, so we'll talk about it now. But like, yeah, I get it that he has like you know they're doing little. He's clearly gonna turn on Cody at some point. You yeah. know, he's no, old, there's a picture that I saw this. I think it was the State Farms Arena posted where they're like. Cutting a cake before dynamite last week, and 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 behind Cody is is MJF like holding a knife to his back, but smiling. And I get it; they're gonna. I get what they're going for, but to me, it's just like you don't need to add these things. You, you're 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 treating these people as if they're already at a level. Well, uh, to that that, and to me, they're not at yet. To me, more importantly, I think they're forgetting they're on TNT. And like, there's a lot of people who are gonna probably be tuning in who just like don't give a damn about Twitter. Yeah, like they're not. They're Agreed. not looking at social media. They so don't know who these guys are. So you need to have him come out are. and establish who he is first. Like I've, I'm losing it over the fact that you've been on TV for four hours at this point. You showed Orange Cassidy for like 15 seconds, and he got major reaction. He might be the most over guy in that company right now. Did you watch like, AEW Dark? Yeah, dude. When he came out, that place went nuts. It's it just like I, I'm very confused by the like. You have what? I would argue a month, two months to like really grip people. Yeah. And like get them viewing your show. Why you wouldn't feature like either A, a consistently rotating cast, and like why wouldn't you feature everyone within two weeks in like a major scale? Why would you put your first Kenny Omega and your first Joe H. Nella match on your YouTube show? Yeah. What? And it's an unsanctioned match with zero build. Nope. It what? just kind of happened, yeah. So now you're just pigeonholing, you're just like, you're just straight up just saying, like, that's what Joey Janela is. You know, that's all we use Joey Janela yeah. for. And it's like, I don't know, I think he's better than and that. And plus, those matches count. So, I agree. It, it's, it's all, it all just feels way too muddled. And, you know, we were talking about it earlier with, you know, the whole, like, their commitment to not doing backstage bits, which is like their bread and butter, and it's just a lot of things where those things would help so much. I would, I, I hope that they yeah. eventually realize it's needed. Yeah, on you, both you have, shows. This was my yeah. bi- biggest gripe on both shows is they're going, and maybe it's I'm not a sports guy, but they're going two sports and not enough of the like the comedy stuff too. Comedy's fun, like, I, well, and they did a little fun, bit last night like, on NXT. But especially with AEW, it's one of those things where. You know, you have teams like, you know, you featured the best friends with like this weird hug video uh, and then like just showed Chuck Taylor talking for like five seconds, Orange Cassidy, and that was the end of the segment. And it was like, oh, oh okay, cool. That I was guess. so confusing. And it, it's like they feature these guys in like these weird small bits. And if you just gave them two, three minutes to like maybe flesh out the character on TV a little bit more and get people interested, I don't know. It'd be a world think, of difference to me. But. I think the most um, uh, uh, effective things they've done on the show so far are the little video packages. Like the one they did last week on Sammy Guevara and, and Cody was fantastic. Oh, oh, and I yeah, think the, that's the a Nick Mondo I thought thing. you meant like the uh, SCU thing and I was like, no, that no, no, was no, weird no. to me. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about the like cool oh, US, yeah. documentary style, like Road 2 style videos. I think, I feel, I, it had a Nick Mondo vibe to it. I, I have a feeling he was, because Sick he's, Nick rules, apparently so. he's a director at AEW now. So Hell yeah. that's what his profile says. Um, and the stuff he's made has been cool. Like, he made that one commercial that they had last week, too, that I liked a lot. Yeah, and all the Ambrose stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, this is something I did love, and that was everything with Chris Jericho last night. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're flawless. Chris Jericho, I I loved the introduction of his stable so much. The name, meh. I'm not a huge fan of the name because it just reminds me of the band. But... <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy who sang Bad Boys, you know, the cops theme. I, it, it was just everything, like, it just reminds you of everything good. Like, it's been so long since we've just, like, obviously we've seen Chris Jericho and, like, these online bits and, like, small things online. And, like, oh, in New Japan he did some stuff. But, like, this has been the first time in a while he's just had a live mic on TV just kind of going off. And it was like, oh, I forgot how goddamn cool you are all the yeah, time. Yeah, totally. Like, you have quips, and they're great, and you do, like, little backstage segments, but, like, you just on TV for ten minutes yelling perfection. Well, it's like he came out, he got himself over, built up more to co- the, his Cody match. Yeah. Then he used his skill on the mic to get every single guy on his team yeah. over. Threw shots at WWE. Yeah. Uh, like, he, he he was in rare form. I shouldn't say rare because he's great on the mic, but he was in rare form because it's like, he, you could tell he was like, oh, I can just go out there and say what I want. 
cool. And he just went out there and he was like, I'm going to show everyone why I shouldn't have had a, a fucking script this whole time. And that's really been his, it's seemingly been I, part I of his mission statement. I think my favorite statement. was him just being like, oh, they're on my list. Referencing his WWE like creative thing. And then is like, we the people. Yeah, that was shitty WWE creative. And I was like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm so glad you pointed that out because I too said this. I literally said the exact same thing to a friend of mine when he was like, well, catch me up. And I was like, Jericho promo. Great. But it was a little weird that he was like, he was like, that was bad creative. We're not going to have that here, but I'm going to mention the list. I'm going to mention the good creative. was a WWE creative thing. And I know he came up with it with Jimmy Jacobs came up with it with him or whatever, but still a thing that was with WWE creative. Yeah. But, but, when he said that, I, I did like that he has now flipped the list. That it's, yeah. you want to be on the list now. Yes, like that, the list that, is a great the thing. Li- I did like that, that it's like, he's bizarro Jericho. I like when he does that kind of thing, where now it's like, the list is a good thing, you know? Yeah. That, like that's also, I'm bad fully guy down for just like, crazy blazer Jericho, no shirt. I... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I like Jericho with as many spikes as possible on his jacket. Oh, no, I'm down for Hot Topic goth that Jericho okay, okay, when okay. he's on the way to the ring. Okay. I'm just saying promo Jericho, just like sleazy 80s Jericho is just fantastic. <gasps> yeah. Fully for it. Yeah, and he, you know, when he, I will say though, even though he said the list thing right afterwards, um, I did like how he shut down those We the People chants. Although, yeah. also silly because Jack did embrace it after leaving WWE. And that I was his he did entire MMA. MMA yeah, I think he did an <laughs> MMA too, so it was a, it was a little funny. I'm like 99% sure he, sho- he sold We The People shirts <laughs> after the fact. And like, also it's funny to me that like, it's like, no more We The People, even though we all know that like, Jack Swagger is a little MAGA, and he's, he's very open about the fact that he likes Donald Trump and stuff, and it's funny to me that it's like, We The People, that's not his thing anymore, and he's standing there with a group of Mexicans, and a, and and a Canadian dude, <laughs> and you're just thinking. I was just thinking to myself, like, mm, that's why he's so quiet right now. He's just like, that's why he's just staring at the camera. Say he's like, nothing. Oh, I hope Say Zeb nothing. doesn't see this. I hope Zeb doesn't see. This. He's gonna be able to get a mean text from him. Say nothing. <laughs> Say. N- <laughs> but I love, you know, also just the fact that you could tell that Jericho. One of the things here, you know, one of the things he had said when he first signed with AEW was like, hey, you know, we can help talent get over. Like, we can help make them stars. We can make these guys bigger deals. And he did make everyone seem like a bigger deal here in his group. This is gonna sound bad, and I do not mean it in the way that I do. Sammy Guevara, a guy no one should give a shit about yet. Sammy Guevara is great. I love Sammy. Like, but he's a character no one knows and has very little character yet. No one should care about Sammy Guevara yet, and Jericho got him over in three minutes. Yes, and was like, "Look at the sexy Spanish god next to me." It was like, and he got to be in the tag match with him later. Honestly, yeah. Sammy Guevara last night, and I, look, I love the match with Cody, but his just his yeah um, uh, being in part of Jericho's crew and, and, and his affiliation with Jericho upped his value so much last so night to much. where by the end of that, I was like, "Oh yeah, he's he's." He's going to be up there with these guys. Yeah, like, no, I like Sammy, I'm into this. I'm very happy with how they are treating Sammy. Mm-hmm. And, like, that entire deal, like, that, uh, hopefully they're not PNP anymore, but uh, Santana Ortiz, uh, the, like, everyone just looked like goddamn monsters. Mm-hmm. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I also like, you know, we had Darby Allen versus Jimmy Havoc. Um, great match. They killed it. You didn't love it as much? <laughs> I did love the match. I found it weird that Pac decided to bitch about it after the match. Oh, oh no, I loved it that he was bitching about it d- d- during the match, you mean, right? Well, no, like he wasn't on. Oh, was he not on commentary for that no, one? He, he was, was on commentary, commentary later? for the Moxley okay, Spears. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was like, what are you doing out here now? And then he attacks Omega, who came out to confront Moxley with a broom wrapped in bar. It was just like, okay. Well, because he's. I, no, I kind of get it because he thinks he's above those two guys. And that's why he was mad during the Moxley match. No, no, no. Because he, he was like, why am no, I not. A title, they, no, title he's match. above. No, he's above uh, Darby Allen yeah. and uh, Jimmy, Havoc. Jimmy Havoc. But he wasn't out there during that match. He came out to like bitch later on. You know, I kind of liked it. I, I will say when he was coming out, when he came out to bitch later on, I because I, I have said the same thing to a few friends of mine. I go, like, wins and losses matter. Shouldn't Pac be in the title match because he's had higher caliber, like, or at least shouldn't he be? in the number one contender's match because he's had higher caliber wins and hasn't lost. Yeah. And I was like, shouldn't he? Because Jimmy Havoc and them have kind of lost. Like, what that? doesn't make a lot of sense. So, yeah, I agree. He could. It would have made sense there, too. And but like, I didn't mind him coming out after the fact and just being like, 
not really sure why I'm out here. I should be wrestling. I, I just would heavily preferred it if he came out and just laid out both Darby and Jimmy Havoc and was like, I, what the fuck is this? No. <laughs> I loved how much of an asshole he was on commentary. It oh, cracked yeah, me that- up. Such an asshole on commentary. No, where, J- where JR was like, oh, Pac's here, Pac, how, how's things? And Pac was just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I loved it. I'm, I'm, this is not happening. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, so I, I love shit. It. It uh, great. And, and uh, you know, I, I, obviously the right person to win was Darby Allen. Darby Allen, I think, is really going to like be one of their guys. I think Darby Allen is really going to connect with a certain part of the audience that they want. Uh, I, I mean, I feel like this is gonna sound weird, but like wrestling audiences are always going to want a Jeff Hardy. Yeah, where totally. it's like they. That's okay, what I was thinking, like a Jeff Hardy, like, a Raven, like yeah, something like that. Like, like we want some goofy asshole in face paint yeah. who's willing to like hurt himself a weird amount for us. Or I was just gonna say, too, someone that connects with like that, like <laughs> this is gonna sound mean, but like someone who connects with like that kid who like at school who like keeps to himself. That's kind of like. Quiet and weird, kind of like the kid that can speak to that crowd. Hey, I was a key holder at Hot Topic when I was nineteen. I get it. You know, like, <laughs> I was gonna say someone who like sniffs glue, but that didn't sound right. You no, know, that, that seems was, mean. Oh god, that's way meaner. Yeah, that was way meaner. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think of a nicer way to say it as I was fleshing Darby it out. Darby Allen is specifically for people who huff paint, and this is. <laughs> no, but you know no, what I mean? But like, like the Hot Topic so, goth crowd. A kid, yeah. who, a kid who would think about trying it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> About doing a coffin drop or huffing glue? <laughs> huffing glue. <laughs> why, I, why are we on this huffing glue train with Darby Allen? You don't think he's ever huffed paint one, once or like, like, like. I'm assuming not. Uh, but the man is a peak physical athlete, and you're like. Oh, oh also, he's super straight edge too, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, though. You know what I mean. You know what Just I mean. because you had a weird childhood ride right, doesn't mean the rest of us were out in the back huffing paint. Like, it doesn't equate to that. Um, okay, so um, I, I, but oh, back to the reason I brought up the Jericho and putting over talent stuff. Thing, oh, yeah, I, we were there. Yeah, is because I do like that he's not only is he helping his own stable out, but I feel like he's going to help make Darby Allen look like a million bucks next week in the in the title match between the oh, two of them. Oh, uh, yeah. He already had that awesome moment at the end of the show with the skateboard, which was so, which was my favorite moment of the show. That, <laughs> I love that so much. I, I saw your tweet. And I think any person who played Tony Hawk, pro skater, had the same idea in mind when we saw it. Everyone like, wanted to make the joke. And in my head, I was like, ah, it doesn't work unless I edit the song over it. I don't have the time to do that right now. I'm just, I'm just, I'll let someone else do it. And sure enough, like an hour and a half later, I saw there was a, uh, a Twitter account that added the music over it, the, the Superman Perfect. song. Yes. And then when he jumps off. They added like at the bottom like the uh, the text that that you show when you do a trick, <laughs> and it said Ollie plus pun- punch Ollie as, as he's punching Jericho, which I loved. Uh, That's so good. I should give cre- I should mention the name of the site uh, or the name of the Twitter page. It's a good. It's it was a uh, Tiger Driver. What's the actual handle though? Hold on, because it was oh. it, it cracked me up. It was so good. I'll give him. Give him some props here. I'm also just noticing we have the same Shawn Michaels sticker. Oh, look, look at, at that. Yeah, Sexy yeah, Shawn Michaels. Sexy Shawn Michaels. Uh, LaPel, yeah, right? LaPel, yeah. That's from their Sexual him. Awakening pack or whatever, yes. right? Yeah, I've got a couple of them on here. Um, yeah, Tiger Driver 9X. That's the that's the Twitter account. Thank oh, you, Tiger Driver. Speaking of funny edits, I love that SmackDown opening that was where they just added the All That theme song that over it. That was so good. <sighs> it went... Perfectly. Uh, Emi Sakura versus Sakura and Bri Priest, Bia Priestley versus Britt Baker and Riho. Um, I, I don't. I feel bad because I feel like Britt is not connecting in the way they thought she was going to as well, their main person in the women's division what, because that crowd just like is not making noise when her and Bia do their thing, and I, 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 I've been confused by it. Well, I feel like they just haven't given them enough attention yet. Fair, maybe like, that's a, it. A horrible way to say that, by the way, but uh, it's just one of those things where, you know, the only person in the women's division that they've really given a lot of time a day to has been Nyla Rose, and then after that, everyone's kind of, I don't want to say fallen by the wayside, but they just need more exposure. I also feel like, you know, and I hate to, I don't know if this is mean necessarily, but... The dentist gimmick thing isn't getting over with the fans in the way they'd like. Like, I get it. It's cool. She works a day job. And then also. Yeah. Like, but I just don't think it's connecting in the way that pe- that they thought it would in terms of, like, she's a real person. I Yeah. I definitely like the the dentist quote. Like, I don't like I don't like the idea of a dentist gimmick. Obviously, you're going back to Isaac Yankum stuff. Yes. Which, I mean, kind of great. But 
uh, at the same time, I think it could really pay off of just like, hey, I know the jaw. And if she had a finisher that was like, oh, well, she I'm, does. But like specifically is just like, oh, let me like break teeth and like, well, and, like her spit finisher, out a chiclet her or finisher something. now, she has that submission where she stuck, sticks her fingers in their mouth. It like mandible is, claws, which also which seems silly to me. No, you need like a face breaker move, like a running knee to the face that's just like, no, I'm gonna break your jaw. Yeah, no, I, I, I. I mean, I get it. She studied the mouth, so she knows the part of inside your mouth that hurts while she's doing the submission move. Yeah. It's just very, I agree with you, it's very Isaac Yankum. Like, it's yeah. very, like, IRS, like, like old school. And, and maybe it'll work, but I just, from what I've seen, what I see on Twitter and stuff, I don't see it connecting with a lot of people. And I think she is talented, but yeah. but it's for some reason it's not connecting in the way they, they thought it would, I don't think. No, no. I, I mean, I do think it just needs a little bit more time and a little bit more... Finesse added onto the character. I I, I do think if they did yeah. more of those vignettes, like the documentary style things that I was talking yeah. about, where they do but with, not with where Cody she's and Sammy. Like, oh, here I am working on a mouth. Like, I mean, no, like may, uh, maybe if it was done right, and they like they highlighted the fact that like she works and like that, that she's a real person, they could maybe get away with it and 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 get it over. But it's yeah. a tough. It's a tough sell. I think. Yeah. Right, because uh, you would it's think someone who's like, tough sell. I also work a day job as as a doctor would almost be kind of like a heel trait to some, like the crowds that it. Well, I, I also feel like it, this is gonna sound so bad, but in 2019, having a second job isn't a big deal. <laughs> like, there's a guy who. Just, it also makes you. It also, and I get it's both. These are both your passions, but it doesn't a, make your wrestling company look good that yeah, you also have no, a second job. There's a guy. Well, no, there's a guy who was just pitching in the uh, American League Divisional Series. Who literally, like, on his Twitter profile is like, oh, I'm a driver who has a 4.99 Uber rating. Like, he's, like, to the side, he, he drives Uber, and then he pitches. And it's like, yeah, okay, cool, you have two jobs, it's fine. <laughs> totally, totally. Like, Britt Baker being a dentist, I'm like, it's cool, like, don't get me wrong, like, you're a dentist, that's great, but, like... Your dentist. <laughs> totally. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the occupation in most like shows and movies where they're like, oh, I'm a doctor. It's like, you're a dentist. <laughs> Erica definitely made that joke when she came out. She's like, well, she's not a doctor. And yeah. I was like, it's still a hard thing. Like, But yeah, it's the joke that people make, obviously. Yeah. Um, I, John Moxley versus Sean Spears, solid match, I thought. Um, just honestly, it was cool to see Mox. I think Mox, I'd, you I didn't think like it, was, it as much? Well, I think it was true. Like... The fact that Sean Spears was brought in as this like big thing, and he's just gotten trounced on so far. Mm-hmm. Well, he like, won, didn't he? No, he lost. Yeah, he lost. Yeah, and it's just like okay, like maybe build up like Sean Spears a little bit more. Like I, I don't know. It, I liked the match itself, and I loved seeing Moxley like him coming out and just being like ready. That's what I liked the most. I was like, this is like this is the guy that they needed. Like Jericho is great and everything, but how old's Chris at this point? Totally. It's like he's a guy with a clock on him, and like he's been, he got a fresh chip on his shoulder. Yeah, Jericho and Cody have had that chip on their shoulder for a while now. Yeah, like Moxley's the guy who came out and was like, "This is the guy AEW needs." He looks like a star. He's got that feeling of just like, "No, I'm ready." Yep, yep. It, it felt good. Sean Spears. I, I feel like they could have done that match with like ten other guys, and it would have been fine. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, throwing Sean Spears in there. Also, is Sean Spears just using the contact, like the contact lenses for big matches? I think so. I really hope that's like a pay per view, like yeah. the demon. Yeah, that's his demon. <laughs> his version he's got of the, the demon the is eyes. just like ice contact yeah. lenses. <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with everything you said right there. That's one hundred percent how I felt about all of that. Um, and I also, I, I did like the post match stuff. I, as much as I'm a. I don't love what they're doing on BTE right now where it's um, fractured from what we're seeing on AEW where it's like we're getting this weird tease of Kenny Omega like losing it and then like on TV we're not seeing really anything like that I don't feel like. Nope, like, you're not even seeing his matches apparently. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but I did like here where he came out and he had like – because right when he came out and he had both of them, my girlfriend said, well, that's going to be hard to swing both of those. And Erica said and I was like – I bet you one of those is for Moxley. And I like that it was like he tossed the bat to Moxley and then he had the the, the broom yeah. for himself. And I was like, I, I like this. And, I, you know, when they were, they were you know, squaring up or whatever, and then when Pac just was like, noped him and just came running in with a chair and noped him, I liked it. But then I did – I I kind of would have liked to have seen Moxley then go a little crazy with the barbed wire bat yeah. um, as opposed to just being like, oh, no, he got hit, whatever, we're WWE bros. Thanks, dude. And like, late, and then walked out. 
I well, I took that as like I'm not fighting downed people. Like I am fi- Like if you're gonna fight me, you're gonna be on your fucking feet. For fair, me. fair. But also like. I really appreciate how, like, if you walked into last night never seeing an AEW episode, because it's episode two, that's yeah. not hard to, like, imagine. Nope. Uh, if you walked into last night and you had no idea who Kenny Omega was, you'd just see, like, this crazy guy with a broom wrapped in barbed wire and just go, were you just, like, in the janitor's closet finding, like, you had well, one bat and you're like, well, I need something else now? Yeah, well, like I said, I was watching with Erica and she, oh, she's definitely not, like, up on her New Japan knowledge. Yeah. So when he came out of the broom, she was like... Well, that's not very intimidating. And I was like, well, that's kind of like a thing. She's like, a broom? And then she was like, and then like uh, Excalibur said something on commentary, like, the cleaners got it. And she was like, no, well, JR had to clarify. So, yeah, yeah. it was JR. So, yeah, so JR was commentary. like, oh, he's got the broom because he's the cleaner. And it was and like, then, the, okay, and, that's. And, and, and that's 100% what Erica did. She went like, Oh, a little heavy. Got it. Guys. Got it. Got it. <laughs> like you don't need a broom. You could have just had two bats, and it would have been fine. Uh, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara was Hangman Page and Dustin Rhodes. I loved this match. Um, you know, yeah. I have always felt like Dustin Rhodes was underutilized in WWE. When he had that quick thing where he came out as himself, I was like so hype, and then they never really followed up on it too much. No, they uh, do. And and I like Dustin Rhodes when he's able to just do his thing. Dude, doing like top jumping off the top rope at like fifty something years old. Like, yeah, that's pe- impressive. People forget like once he got clean and in shape, it was like, oh, you like. There's a reason why you are the natural. Like, you like, yeah, you got you gained a lot of weight and got really depressed at one point, and then got sloppy, and then you cleaned your ass up, and then it was like, oh yeah, you are a beast. Holy hell! Yep. Like he's been going like that for what ten years now? Oh yeah, at least yeah. And it's like, okay, cool. And I felt like for a lot of that 10 years, he wasn't really, he'd get to come in and do like a few cool things like for a week or two or like maybe a month yeah. program and then be gone. And everyone, when he'd come in, would be like, man, Golda still got but, it. Like, and he, then they, they didn't ever do anything. People forget that Rhodes versus Shield match. Oh my God. I, I struggle to think of a time. It was like that in like Cena Punk at Money in the Bank. That might be the two most over crowds I have ever heard in my life. Yep. Yep. Like that pop when Cody hit the cross. Jesus Christ. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Nuclear. So, that's why I was so happy to see Justin just just like yeah. doing his thing, you know? And I like that. Um, I, I do laugh that they like teased him retiring for a while, and now it's just like, nah, he's part of the roster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, they saw, man, he gets just major pops when he comes out. Oh, no, ma- like major pops yeah. and everything. But like his first two matches were like, you're not retiring yet. You got one more match with me. <laughs> totally. Actually, you're just signed. You're going to be wrestling on TV a bunch, too. <laughs> cool. Um, and, and I also love that, like, you know. Everyone gave Jericho shit for the Judas effect when he first announced it. It was everyone was laughing. Everyone was texting each other like, "He's just his new finishing move is just a back elbow." Like, yeah. and everyone was just kind of making fun of it. They have done a great job of getting that move over. I like that move now. I, I'm into it. I love the move strictly because knowing how old Jericho is, just like, ah, oh, dude, doesn't even have to bump. This is yeah, so he loves, yeah, I love it. I love it for him. He's like, just like, yeah, this is my finisher now. Fuck you. Guys. He's given us enough moon salts and code breakers to where I'm like, no, exactly, totally okay with it. Like it, he could have made his like finisher like a chop, and I would be like, this is perfect. You go, you do you, buddy. Well, you always hear like uh, people like Hulk Hogan and stuff where they're like, man, if I can go back in time and change my finisher. It would be one where I don't land on my butt every time, like where yeah. I just kicked someone, you know, where I just punched someone, you know. Uh, so th- uh, smart, very smart to yeah. add time to his career, to you know, to add time to his career, and it's, it, I like it. It's the way he does. It's it's similar to uh, Sweet Chin Music where they've gotten it over where it's like a, it's something that knocks someone out. It's like a thing you see in MMA, so it's not entirely unbelievable or no, anything no, like no, that. No, 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 not unbelievable. Like when done correctly. Like, a, a great example is just, like, Wade Barrett, when you build up, like, you know, we all remember how trash the Wasteland was, and then he switched to Bullhammer, and it was just like, oh, this is a less taxing finisher, but it looks awesome. Like, I didn't that. hate. I didn't hate the other one. The oh, Wasteland? I, everyone hated Wasteland. I didn't hate Don't it. Don't you lie to me. I didn't hate it. It was the lazy... Like, no one at home could see that, but it was just me just, like, lightly putting someone over my shoulders and, like, flopping them onto the ground. Um, okay, and then there was the whole post-match thing. The main thing I liked about this post-match stuff was... Darby. Uh, Darby, obviously, <laughs> him coming out on the skateboard. I also liked the setup for potential Hangman versus Hager 
uh, yep. thing where where Hager kind of started hitting Hangman and stuff and and, and clotheslined him out of the ring. I feel like that's a feud that they're going to explore next. Um, I like that. Yeah. No. One hundred percent. Yeah. A lot of good stuff in this week's episode. Yeah. No. They. they again, there's there's a lot of booking stuff that could be questionable, but at the same point, there's a foundation for a lot of really good things that if they figure it out. Great. Like, I'm fully on board with all yeah. of it. And that was the only... That I, I, we already talked about the beginning, but that was the other booking thing that I just didn't love was, you know, the heels beating up on the baby faces and, you know, people were coming out to save and then MJF is the one who comes out to make the big save and you're like, I get it. He, they've been doing this whole friends with Cody thing. But, like, I just don't think they need to add more nuance to the MJF character yet. In a year yeah. from now, I love it. You sure. know, but, like, he should just be shitty heel MJF for now so that people who don't follow him on 100%. Twitter who don't know who he is should just learn who this shitty asshole is you yeah, know yeah like Grant like to be like you mentioned that like uh, cake knife photo yeah you know how much we're both on fucking Twitter I hate it but yeah. at the same point like I didn't see that photo it's slick and like we're on there and all I, the time it's, and I love easter eggs like that but yeah. I just don't think you need to blatantly add the nuance to him in our faces like that exactly yet. yeah yeah um, okay so NXT kicked off with a Dope match between Drew Gulak versus Leo Rush for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Which I'm happy they did. It was the one thing that was missing last week that, like, they didn't do a title check. Like, everything, I felt like last week's NXT, which was, like, really good, was, like, the equivalent of, like, throwing a car in neutral and, like, slamming the gas. Like, sure, the car's making a lot of noise, but, like, it fucking went nowhere. Mm-hmm. And, like, this week it was, like, right off the bat, like, great, we got Leo. Good. Yep, yep. And which is like a great like don't get me wrong I love Drew Gulak but at the same time Leo is a I don't want to say much better representative but if they're like trying to go with like flashy and meet AEW getting someone who's like a high flyer who can go high speed I, Leo is a much better representative of that world. Well, and, and they already have Walter on the show who's almost like a better version of that same style right now. So yeah. I don't know if Gulak is necessarily needed as much on the show right now. While I love Gulak and I yeah. think he's great, uh, I feel like they kind of have Walter in that role right now of like the old school grappler type type deal. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I agree with you. I think it was very smart to put Leo Rush in the title picture or to have him be the champion. Um, I agree with you wholeheartedly that it was smart to do a title change here because I do think that was the I agree with you that was what was missing last week was one title change of some sort yeah Um, I I will say I did laugh uh, alone watching NXT audibly when Regal was putting the belt on Leo and Gulak tried ripping the belt off but Regal had already buckled it so he just ended up pulling Leo forward a bunch (laughs) that was it I was alone in my apartment just laughing heartily I laughed when Moro said how do you spell Leo L-I-T and I thought to myself no, that's <laughs> not how you spell Leo. Yeah, don't teach the children how to yeah. spell his name wrong. Like that's that doesn't make nope. any sense. It that, didn't even that, make any sense. There was a lot of Mario weirdness. Like that, Gulak, right? Gulak lost, and then he's like, to quote Meek Mill, and it was like Meek Mill's from Philadelphia. Like, why are you quoting Meek Mill during a Gulak <laughs> loss? What said, is happening? He also said he said. Uh, Kushida out to prove that size doesn't matter. And I was like, don't say that. that I'm sure Kushida does not want you putting that message out there about him. <laughs> I do want those signs at every NXT event. <laughs> Kushida, size doesn't matter. I'm like, no, don't make that his thing. Um, I, uh, I, yeah, but I like Leo Rush being, being the cruiserweight champion here. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, I, I am waiting for like five weeks from now where every episode isn't necessarily like a takeover because I want. Yeah, no, it needs to go back to old NXT where it's like. One of the best parts of NXT yeah. was the long term st- storytelling. And the reason they were able to do that is because they had these long tapings where they had to craft these long yep. storylines to make sure that, that that time was valuable. And that's become one of the trademarks it's, of NXT, in my opinion, was. Okay, you don't get yeah. as much long story, long term storytelling on the main roster, but you get it in NXT. And as much as like, yeah, I get it, we're getting the storytelling of like yep. the undisputed era, having everyone come in at them from all sides, Velveteen Dream, Champa, uh, Finn Balor, which does make me think that the War Games match is going to be those four and four. Yeah, that, and someone maybe like Johnny Gargano, Johnny Gargano, Champa, Velveteen Dream, and Finn Balor versus Adam Cole. Um, just, Adam Cole. <laughs> so, just Adam Cole. Just Adam Cole. Sorry, it gets Adam Cole on the disputed four era. and one. Um, but I like you know I, I get that they're doing all of that, but I just feel like one of the 
best parts about NXT is the storytelling and not just the matches. And I get that they're like up against AEW, who they're like, we're going to focus on the matches, but I feel like you just don't need to just keep your strengths. I mean, you know, like no, long term storytelling was your strength. Entirely. I fully agree with that. Especially my favorite part of NXT was like, the comfort of tuning into a week and knowing I'm not going to see half the roster. Yeah. Like, it's that excitement of just like, oh, like, and I mean, they're kind of doing it on this one. Like, they do it, I I think it's going to happen on a much smaller scale now because beforehand there'd be weeks where people would disappear when it was like, okay, this is fine. And it's like, this is how we're going to let storylines progress. I think they're going to have the major storylines be week by week, obviously, like Adam Cole, every episode, like, every major thing is going to happen. But like, a great thing is, like, Keith Lee, uh, Dominic. That's a match that's going to happen next week. They showed a little vignette. Mm-hmm. Nothing. That was it. Like, yep. they didn't I have, love that. They didn't the have any Keith interviews. Lee, they didn't well, they have had any the little st- interviews. Did, did they have any? They had, like, little sit-down videos of the two of them where they were talking about the match. Oh, yeah, no, no. But like, that's what I was saying. Like, they had the vignettes about the yeah, match. Yeah. But, like, that was it. It wasn't, like, backstage segment. No. Where it's, like, next week. None of that. Yeah. It was just, like, here's this vignette that we pre-taped. Very quick, very concise. Gets a point across that next week there is going to be a nightmare match that's going to be had. Yep. Uh, and like that to me, I was comfortable with. I feel yeah. better. I hope it's the main event this time, though, because I didn't like that it was like the opening match last time. I hope it main events this time and they just let them go all out for like 30 minutes or something yeah, like that. That would be. Uh, however, I don't think it is because next week they also uh, What's next teased week uh, Pete Dunne and. Uh, that won't main event over this one. Goth Priest. Um, Damien Priest? Yeah. <laughs> goth club. The archer of him. Goth me. king. Uh, I so, love goth king Damien Priest. <laughs> I, I, it's funny when I was, you know, I I kind of laughed at the bow and arrow thing when he started doing it on TV. Um, in person, though, it looks so cool. On TV, it doesn't come across <laughs> as cool. It looks kind of silly, like he's playing like a 3D game or something at home or something like on his Wii. But in person, it looks way cooler for some reason. I I just love the vignette they had this week where it's like. It's like him being like, Pete Dunn, I picked you. And then shows him hanging in like this goth limo and going to like it. techno clubs. And it's like, <laughs> what is happening to like 90s like goth king? I like all that. It's so good. I actually really enjoyed that. Him and the Pete Dunn vignette. I was like, yeah, yeah I'm into this. I yeah, like this. No, I was all for all of it. Yeah. Big fan. Um, I, you know, they also did the Tegan Knox tease. And I feel like we're they are subtly building to Tegan versus Rhea Ripley, I feel like. Because Rhea, Rhea then came out right afterwards. And I feel like we still haven't got Tegan getting her revenge on Rhea Ripley for the injury. They still haven't done that yet. Uh, I hope they don't. I, Rhea's a goddamn star to me. Oh, she's I need, so good. I need... I need, to, I need her to be champion like yesterday. Her, her, uh, you know, it's her versus uh, Aaliyah uh, up next, uh, minute twenty two. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I love that finish, man. That submission finisher where she gets him in that oh. clover leaf. Such a cool way of doing it because it's kind of like ankle lock e, but yeah. also it's the clover. And then she can spin him around and drop him down. Well, she's it's also great. massive. Yeah, so, oh, like, yeah. It's what ninety five percent of that roster, like. Nia Jax and Tamina, probably the two exceptions of people in the, like, WWE universe who you can't do that move on. And maybe she can. <laughs> she probably could. That's the fucked up thing it about it. probably could. That, yeah. I mean, Cesaro can do the swing on some pretty like, big Like, maybe dudes. not with not Nia's uh, knees, but outside yeah, of that, true, yeah. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> maybe not true with to, like, that. Tamina. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, oh. good good uh, utilization of a squash, ma- squash match. I liked it. Um... Breezango versus the Forgotten Sons. The entrance was weird. I was very... Con- I mean, I know I said more comedy. So I will say, I laughed at all of this. It was just out of nowhere. I was very confused by it. I So I did not write many notes on this. And I'm happy you pointed this out because strictly I looked at that and I was like, I don't want to put a spotlight on this because I think I missed something. <laughs> Where it's like they came out with the whole like construction worker gimmick. No, I, I was also confused. I don't think yeah. I missed. I don't think anything. That was, was the missed. thing is, I was like, I've been out of the loop on Brizango, I think, because I have no idea what they're doing. To my recollection, they had like an updated look for Takeover, and then maybe like the last time, and, and same for the last time they were on and TV now when they tied with Kushida. I'm very. But they yeah. didn't have any new buildup as to why they were okay, men at yeah. work, or why they were construction workers now. Yeah. And I Beth did, Phoenix I, was just like, thirsted, oh yeah. Thirsted over them big time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got Edge versus Fandango soon, apparently. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, Forgotten Sons win, whatever. Sure. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, is, it, is it bad how ambivalent I am about Forgotten Sons? I'm just very like, I don't. The Sons of Anarchy gimmick in 2019 is very like, okay. You said it. Uh, <laughs> then we had Cameron Grimes versus Boa. I lo- you know what? Unexpected push for Trevor Lee. Sorry, uh, Cameron Grimes. Kayfabe, Brian. Kayfabe. I, I'm like, I, I, I don't know what they're doing with, with Cameron Grimes, but I, I kind of like it. Dirt King Cameron Grimes. Right? It's like a very, like, gypsy weirdo, and I'm, I'm for it. Like, I think? I, yeah, I'm very... They especially like they're having Killian Dane come out and like fuck with them now. Yeah, so it seems like it's gonna be Killian Dane and Cameron Grimes feuding, but I thought Cameron Grimes was also a heel. Yeah. But is he is the Dirt King not a heel? Is he just a Dirt King that we're supposed to cheer for? I hope he's a Dirt King I can cheer for. (laughs) I was planning on doing it anyways. I mean it's kinda hard to boo that hat. All the, there was a funny amount of times where watching Killian Dane like scream, and I was like, he looks like an unhinged Brendan Gleeson, and <laughs> that was my takeaway from that match. Was just like Killian Dane looks a lot like Brendan Gleeson for whatever reason. <laughs> I was very, I, I, I was intrigued by this yeah. segment because I, like, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, Dirt King, but Cameron Dirt Grimes, King and four. Killian Dane, I'm into it. Yeah, maybe they're gonna become a team. Maybe. That could be a good team. Dirt Boys, I'm in. Dirt Boys. <laughs> Dirt Boys. Uh, they're both hairy dudes. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. All right, maybe that's where they're going with it. Um, and then, okay, so then we had Roderick Strong versus Swerve. Isaiah Swerve Scott. Um, great good match. match. Yeah, killer match. Everything is great. Yeah, you're not going to get a bad match from these two yep. guys. I'm not going to, like, pick apart their match because I'd rather discuss other things. It was just a good match. I yeah, really like it I mean, a lot. Well, I mean... I- we we haven't brought it up a lot, but we still we got draft day coming. I up, know that's so. why that's why yeah. I'm, I'm I'm scooting through. Cause I think we let me double check the schedule. Oh shit! Riley roundtable's at two. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Um, we're just gonna you know what we're just gonna we're gonna have to pump through here because I didn't realize another show's gonna start at two. Shit! Well, what time does that go till? Three. Is there anything three to four? Yes. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on one second. I'm just gonna write Riley real fast. Um, let me just double check one thing. Sorry for the delay here, everyone. I thought I had a little bit of extra time just because I didn't check the schedule. Yo, are you guys? Yo, if I go 15 minutes over, is that cool? Or are you Uh, all right, just wrote them. Uh, Roderick Strong wins. Uh, we had the whole post match thing with Velveteen Dream. Yeah, I loved it the way they did that. I love everything they're doing with Velveteen Dream. Oh yeah, so it was uh, fantastic. Yeah. Just being like, hey Roddy, you have like the fact that there's no subtlety where he's just like, you have a small dick, eat it, eat it, you idiot. <laughs> And yeah. Roddy's just freaking out and ringing me like, you come in here. I'm going to fight your ass now. 100%. Great. 100%. Um, and then, oh, wait, they're typing. Oh. Because we also, the other studio is open, so we could just switch rooms and edit these two shows together. Sorry for the behind-the-scenes look there, everyone. Uh, okay, so then uh, after that, we had uh, uh, Champa come out. He does his old daddy's home thing. Where, where does one get a camouflage crutch, by the way? Oh, that's custom, baby. You got to customize that. You got to customize the crutches. I'm. I do love the fact that Champa had to like actually sit down and like hit up a specialty store and be like, "I would like a crutch, but it would also need to be camouflage. Please make that for me." <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Famous. You don't just want a normal crutch. Like you're gonna. You don't need it for a long time. No. 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 Just. Make me a camo one. <laughs> um, and then next we had, uh, well, there, first there was that little moment between Garza Jr. and uh, Tomas Champa backstage, uh, sorry, Angel Garza and Tomas Champa yep. backstage. I actually loved that. Because oh, I, it was so good. Yeah, I, I think Angel Garza is great. And the fact that just, he just hit him this, uh, he hits Garza, and what did he say? Uh, I don't know what he I don't said. Know. And then he walked away. <laughs> that was great. Uh, Dakota Kai versus Bianca Belair. Sure. Uh, I was, you know what? I love both these wrestlers. So yeah, I, I think was, that was my problem with it was just like, is is Bianca a heel? Is 
Because, like, I was curious, like, watching the match, it wasn't apparent to me as a viewer of just, like, oh, like, I thought they were both good guys, and people just like them both. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I was just confused because, I mean, I get it that they're trying to push towards a, um, a Bianca face turn, it yeah. seems. But Dakota just came back. I yeah. didn't understand the point of having Dakota lose already. I didn't, like, no. people were excited for her return. I thought they were going to kind of, like, push her up as possible next contender for Unless uh, she's going to go heal or something. It was just a very weird, like, face-face battle where I was like, okay, am I cheering for both? Like, I, it was another match where I was like, did I miss something? Is Bianca not likable now? Because I thought everyone, but she came out and everyone's like, yeah, Bianca, this is great. It's my one cut, like confusion with the NXT crowds each week is just because everyone gets cheered for the most part. So True. Yeah. I, I do think they're turning her face though. I think they're turning her I face. think she's already face. It's weird. You think so? I Well to the full sale crowd she is because yeah. they love her, so it's hard to say because sometimes there's like that disconnect between the But it the wasn't two. like she didn't do any before like pre or post match like fuck this. Like it was just kind of like no I won. I'm gone. <laughs> True. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I guess yeah, everything's fine. Although I will say, Bianca versus Rhea Ripley is going to be a dope match. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. going to be awesome. Yeah, very much so. I was also wondering if if that somehow Tegan Knox plays in there's like a four-way or something. I don't know. We'll see. I'm trying to fi- I've been trying to formulate in my head what it seems like they're going to do with the women's division. Um, all right, then we got Walter versus Kushida, uh, non-title match. Um I, I, this was such a good match. Sick. Like, Sick. Walter's so good. Like, he's just such like, an imposing powerhouse dude that you want to see beat people up. I love it. It's, Walter is one of the few guys in the industry right now who has that type of force where the match just happens and, like, he can slow the match down. He can speed it up. He Like, the whole, like, ring general thing is, like, LOL, it's on his jacket. But, like... No, he's one of the few guys who can, like, severely dictate how the match functions. And what, like, you have, like, say, a Kushido leo Rush match. You want that match to be fast-paced. Like, that's just going to go a mile a minute. With the, like, any Walter match, it's just like, no, we can speed it up when we need to, but if we need to slow it down, we can as well. Everything's fine. Yep. And yep. he's one of the few guys who can fully get away with that yep. and everyone's like this rules like yep. do more of it I also like that it it, it feels like a fight when he's in the match Yo, more yeah. than others yeah um, it feels like whoever's in there with him is fighting for their life yeah. sometimes <laughs> to where even when Kushida uh, slipped up on that springboard uh, in this match it it looked like it looked like he was trying to do a springboard as like a desperation attempt because he was in the midst of this like intense fight with Walter and it didn't even look bad when he slipped because it was like oh cool like yeah cool like he just Walter yeah. took advantage of it right away and it just felt real almost yeah. to a certain degree Entirely. it wasn't like a, oh look at that butch or whatever you know it, it, it felt real and, and I liked that a lot yeah no Walter is a goddamn nightmare to deal with and I love it so much yeah I, I'm so excited for the I, the beautiful thing about like the whole like roster not to be say it like this but like not really mattering anymore is like there are so many of these potential matches where it's just like oh Walter can now fight Finn Balor okay cool like I, I was honestly thinking about that last night I was thinking oh, oh dude I wonder if that's where they're gonna go if they're gonna go F- Finn Balor versus Walter like I forget if there's a name for it but like I need uh, the Finn Balor running drop kick into the corner thing. I need him to do that and Walter just be like, nah. Oh. <laughs> like, that to me would just be like, this is this is everything I want in my life. Thank you. Oh, wait, that'll probably be the other person. Finn Balor. So it'd be Finn, Velveteen Dream. You said Finn. Oh, I said Finn. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So I was like, what? Finn's got to be in that match, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, unless yeah. they do want to do Walter versus Finn. That well, would be cool, but too. But wait, are, are you thinking it's that? Not, like, they've done two men's one. There's not going to be a women's war games? They set, I don't know if they've set that up enough. There's enough of, like, I guess Shayna's team, but who's going to be her fourth? Um, I don't, I don't know. know. It makes well, sense it, as much. Io. Huh? Mm. So you get Shirai in there. Mm. I don't know if I like that. Shirai against, I don't know, who? Uh, well, let, while we dwell on that, yes. before we spend too much time on that, uh, I want to talk about... Two stories from this week. Uh, first, because I only got time to talk about two stories, and then we're going to do this mock draft probably in the other studio. Okay. Um, 
First story of the week that I want to talk about, Master P getting back into wrestling. Master P announced this week that he's getting back in the wrestling business. He says that he's bought House of Glory Wrestling, I believe, which is a New York thing, right? You're a New Yorker. Yes. Uh, you know, I haven't been in the studio before. Can I clap? You can. Master P, welcome back. I love this so goddamn much. He's like, wait, dude, our kick came back? No limit, soldiers, forever. Yes. Yeah, I, I, when I saw this, I went, what? Like, out of all the people to come back to wrestling, I never expected Master P would be one I'm of them. I'm so for it. I need him and Carl Malone to fight Tommy Dreamer, and it'll just be everything good. Now, I, I, see, I want more of, like, the, the deeper cuts. I want, like, Kiss Demon. I want, like, people like that to come back. Like, have him bring well, Kiss, go, Kiss. go to fucking StarCast, then. Bischoff. <laughs> Bischoff, you know he's the, he's he's running SmackDown again. Yeah, he's got the money for for the, the, behind him Fox money. He could he could license Kiss Demon again. Yeah, so you want the topical thing Fox to for Fox to bring back is fucking Kiss Demon. Kiss Demon versus Kane Velasquez. Book it. <laughs> You know what? I'm actually for this. I know you are. If it's only if he's fighting anyone who like bringing RoboCop to fight Kane Vel- anyone to fight Kane Velasquez, I'm for. <laughs> Did you see the new sc- like I haven't watched the trailer yet, but I saw a screen grab of 2K today where um they showed some of like the fighting in hell type rings, and I'm hyped. Oh, I thought you were going to say Cain Velasquez was in it, and I was no. like, they already have a render. Of no, Cain no, no, Velasquez. no, no, no. Uh, but I'm excited to murder you in hell, is what I'm saying. I'm right. excited for you to do that, and me just to roll your ass up. <laughs> Uh, for people who are not in the know, I play Ryan in WWE 2K games, and all I do is roll ups, and I win. He's a dirty cheater. Uh, he doesn't always. He actually always wins. Uh, hey, like, why would it be in the game if it wasn't meant to be used? Uh-huh. That's all I heard right now. Anyways, uh, this doesn't go past anything, right? Like, Master P's not actually back in wrestling. Like, he announced it, but I feel like this is gonna be like his WCW stint. He he came in. Is there for two weeks. I want and him to have a bounces. fucking scaffold match. Like, bring in, <laughs> you think he's gonna bring Swole? Is Swole alive? May, oh god, that's a maybe. Swole WC. By the way, I keep expecting this chair to have like arms, and I keep putting my hand up. Like, I'm horrified if anyone ever watches this video to see how many times my hand like goes to reach for a a arm. Okay, so he did wrestle. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, he is alive. Still. Oh, I thought you were going to say he is dead. <laughs> he's apparently he's a born again Christian and speaks for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. But I didn't sure. know that he wrestled in New Japan before WCW. Did you? Yeah. You knew that. You didn't know that. Yeah. Really? It's Master Pig. Wait, no, Swole. Oh, Swole. You knew Swole wrestled in New Japan no, I didn't before his stint in WCW no. with, as part of the No Limit Soldiers? I didn't either. I, that whole set, that is one of my favorite. Storylines of WCW, the rap is crap thing. Just because it's got a whole music video and everything. I loved the whole rap is crap thing. Well, I mean, plus it just had like Jarrett and Henning, and it was so good. Oh, wait. You look horrified right now. No, we just got a, I just got a message. Hey, man, we had to move ours anyways so you can take the time needed. Oh, great. Draft isn't moving. Draft is not moving. You know, let's just get into the draft. I mean, well, real fast. What do you think about WWE pulling Kevin Smith's invite after he appeared on Dynamite and then they pulled his invite from SmackDown? I I mean, it wasn't surprising to me. Like, it's just the idea of like, okay, we're obviously in competition with one show. You appeared on that show. You would understand how like weird it would be to have you on both of these in the like same two week time or week time span. Yeah, my, okay, so two things. One, I I don't think he was going to be on. They were going to be on SmackDown. I think it they would, were going to be part of that blue carpet. They were seen at one. They would then be seen at the other. It would. Just, but to, wouldn't it kind of? Okay, see, sometimes I think in like different ways. I think in such other ways sometimes because to me I go, well, if they appear on both shows. Doesn't it demean their appearance on the first show? It's like, no, it wasn't them being like, we're AEW. Yeah. It was two guys trying to promote a movie. And yeah. then it kind of, to me, demeans the 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 the, the, the value of them on the show because it's like, nah, this cool. It was a PR thing, you know? It was just like a thing they were doing for a movie, not because they like AEW or Chris Jericho or whatever. Um, also, you got to know that because he's friends with Chris Jericho... And because he does podcast appearances all the time, he's got his own podcast yeah. network, he does all these shows that he was going to tell everyone right away, and it was going to make you guys look a little petty. I mean, it, like, 
what I, I mean, it was petty, but at the same time, an understandable petty. Fair. I agree like, with that. I, I walked out of it being like, okay, yeah, you guys are being petty bitches, but at the same time, I get why you're doing it. Like, <laughs> it, like it, it's something that if, like, a, if, say, they appeared on Raw, and then, it, like, I wouldn't, I would feel the same way about AEW pulling it. If they appeared on Raw first, and then they're like, well, you were just on Raw. Why would we want you on here? True. Like, true. Yeah, it just... I agree it, with you in that. In yeah, that, in it made that it made sense to me. They do come off petty, but fuck it, who cares? Um, all right, let's get into this draft. Draft. Oh, draft let's get it. into this draft uh, before we got to get out of here. The show's already gone long, but I wanted to do this. It just sounded fun. So wait, yeah. we did, we talked a little bit before. So do you want to post? So I should post our two rosters on Twitter after the show, and yes. then we will let the people decide who has a stronger roster. Yes, I say. I think it should be like because putting it all in one and like having a vote thing would probably be a bit weird. Or actually, no, you could probably put. I don't know. However, people like I don't know how you want to do it. If you want to do like a thread, post both of them, whatever gets more likes, or like put one up, put the two rosters, and then the fourth tweet be a vote one. And people I can feel vote. like because Either I don't way. want to count. Oh, because you said likes. Yeah. But actually, but, the vote but, thing so, would probably work too. Yeah. I, uh, I see what you're saying, though, because whichever one gets the most likes would be easier than showing the roster and then doing a vote, I guess. Right? Uh, either. I What I would say is just, like, put a tweet up and be like, chill hard and myself drafted, like, drafted our own rosters today. Uh, vote accordingly below. And then, it like, do, like, a tweet thread. And then the two tweets below have your roster or my roster. And then people can either like it for that, or we could do the fourth tweet being a vote one, and people could vote. Okay, okay, we'll Twitter do we'll, we'll do one of those. I'll probably we'll, we'll figure it out. I kind of actually like. The, I I feel like people are more likely to like something on Twitter than they are. Ah, oh, people vote, I vote on things all the time too. We'll figure it out. It'll be yeah. one of the two. It'll be one of the yeah. two. Um, but let's get into this for so. Do you have a coin, by the way? We should probably flip a coin for uh, first pick, and also how. The other thing that we didn't go over okay. is because I know you're not a sports person. Are we just doing alternating picks or are we doing a snake style draft? What's that? Snake style draft is if I get the first pick, you would get picks two and three. And, and then? And then I would get picks four and five. Let's do that. Okay. So you want to do snake style. I like that. Okay. Because I was, I was wondering that as well. Uh, so yeah, I think we should, I think that's better. Okay. And we'll do 15 each. That We're going to end up with 15 each, we're right? We're going to end up with 15 each. Um, does that work with the snake style thing, or do we need to add more? We'll, no, we'll it would, yeah, it always works. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I don't have a coin. Um, I, you know what? As you are the consummate host of the show, I will give you, I will defer to you whether you want first pick or you want or the second want, and third. I want second and third. You want second and third. Yeah. Okay. I, I wore my Brady jersey. My Patriots oh. are playing tonight. This is I am ready for this draft. And by the way, uh, James is raw. I am SmackDown. I am Team Raw. This is uh, the red brand. I'm wearing technically both colors, so yeah, it works. you were neutral. So yeah. yeah, so it all works. So pick one. Pick one. What are you I'm going walking with? in this hot. I'm going in this very hot. I'm uh -oh. going because you said something that threw me off, and I was like, oh, should this be my number one pick? And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. It is. Oh no. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm nervous. Thir 32 years old. <laughs> oh, no. Built from Dublin, Ireland. Oh, okay. Going with Becky Lynch. Ooh, that's a good that's, I was, uh, that's, that's four a good time, one. Four time women's champ, one time Rumble winner, the S Sports Illustrated Women's Wrestler of the Year. Okay. All right. That's fair. Uh, like, how do, you how do you not take her at number one? That I am very, like, she has had the hottest year. People forget the whole man storyline has existed for a year. Like, mm -hmm. she she debuted this in October last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's only been a year of her being the hottest thing in mm -hmm. wrestling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it it has to be number one. She just got a video game cover that sky's the limit with her. I'm all in on the Becky train. All right, all right. Yeah. I think that's a solid number one pick. Solid, yeah. I'm going... Sim uh, not similarly, uh, I'm, but I am bummed about that one because that one was high on my list, uh, but not the top of my list. Uh, oh, so you, so your number one pick is still there. My number one and two, which is perfect. Oh, oh, oh. well, actually, yeah, like your number two would have to be. Uh, yeah. Brock Lesnar is my number one. Okay, you're taking Brock uh, off the board. Taking Brock off the board. I don't care what anyone says. 
Brock Lesnar is a draw. Brock Lesnar is one of the most valuable people in professional wrestling. People outside of wrestling know who he is. People inside of wrestling hate him or love him. He put I don't care what you say, when he wants to work, he puts on awesome matches when need be. And if I'm going to have one or two guys who are my big heavyweight men at the top, Number one. I, I mean, he's Lesnar. the only guy who has a championship outside. Yes. So, yes. I am like that. He's got name value. You I, go, I, I will you say. You go, that brand has Brock Lesnar. That, that, might have to watch that brand. He was, he was my number three, so. All right. Yep. Uh, my number two is the other hottest thing in wrestling. You picked Becky Lynch, so I couldn't take that one. But number two is the other hottest property in professional wrestling right now, and that would be The Fiend, Bray Wyatt. I think that The Fiend is the coolest thing in wrestling right now. I think that, um, you know, I've already got my heavyweight uh, guy who's like my legitimate uh, Adonis type figure, at the, you know, that, that's there. That's the stalwart, but, you know, uh, to, to, to market that, uh, alternative side, the, the Darby Allen crowd. Uh, I'm taking the Fiend Bray Wyatt because uh, the Firefly Funhouse is uh, some of the most riveting stuff WWE's done in a while, and everything that he does is always awesome. I'm not gonna lie, and this is gonna be this is gonna probably be very surprising to you. I had him ranked on my sheet as number eleven. What? He is very Bray Wyatt's resume. Like, I understand The Fiend's the hottest thing in uh-huh. wrestling right now. Yeah. His resume is a, one, very forgettable heavyweight title run, and mm-hmm. two, very forgettable tag mm-hmm. team runs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He, does, he There's no resume for Bray. Like, he's got The Fiend. The Fiend is cool, but Bray's previous character has shown to me that, like, WWE tends to fuck up Bray Wyatt. Yeah, but if I'm building a company where I am going to be in hey, charge of it, no, hey, I will push Bray Wyatt hey, appropriately. I had him at 11. You Feel free, you know? <laughs> this is... All right, so who are you? So now you have two then now, right? Is my that how it goes? Two, okay. My two and four are still on the board. All right, look this. at that. This is great. This is already turning out great for me. Um, number two, I, I, I can't not do Seth. Okay. Well, you already got Becky, so... I already got Becky. I have to go with the other one. rules here. Well, like, it, I, I try to keep this as, like... I tried treating this as a nice little kayfabe experiment of, like, as you heard me with Bray, going off, like, resumes and being like, okay, what do people have in their... Do- Seth is one of the few people who have just about fucking everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking four heavyweight championship reigns, two IC, five tag, money in the bank, a rumble. He was N- first NXT... Like... Everything. Mm-hmm. Seth has done everything. Um, yeah, pedigree didn't factor in as much for my picks here yeah. because I feel like I was going for more of the care. I'm going for more of uh, the mix of character and ability in the ring and in terms of what I think oh, would put I, the best I'm, I'm, I'm doing, show on. I'm so doing, I feel like we yeah. are going to differ here. Well, uh, we are going to differ a little, but yeah. like it, ver- like I did a little bit of that. And I try, I factored that in where mm-hmm. possible, but. Um, and then, oh, which one do I want to go with next? <laughs> now you're trying to figure out, you're trying to moneyball this, aren't you? You're trying to figure out who I'm not going to pick now in your later list by the clues I, uh, I have given. Um, You know what? I'm going to do this early. Uh, you know what? Screw it. I'm doing it. Uh, pulling the trigger. Pulling the trigger. New day. All right. All right. Taking the new day off the board. All right. Um, besides Kofi being one of the most prolific resumes on the WWE roster in general, mm-hmm. uh, Big E, future champion in my opinion, uh, the most charismatic group in wrestling, uh, with Big E being top three in charisma already to begin with, uh, sky's the limit. So I got Becky, I got Seth, they can be together, everything's happy, they're engaged, and I got New Day. That's a solid five right off the bat. a solid five. Um, Well, if we're going to moneyball a little bit here and go for kind of like most bang for your buck, then I don't have a woman on my roster yet. So I am going to draft the Kabuki Warriors. Um, oh, because yes. you get Asuka, who would have been one of my top female draft picks. Um, similarly to Brock Lesnar, she's just like this dominant force. And in my opinion, Kyrie Sane is money in the bank, just waiting to happen if 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 uh, booked in the right way. So she kind of just 
this was more for Asuka, to be completely honest, because it's so high up the, the, the in my picks. Oh, yeah. But well, you get two I, for Asuka. Uh, yeah, so. Asuka's another resume that's just like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like, you know, great matches with everyone, awesome character, healer face. Um, because that's also going to factor into my decision making a little bit of like who I think can play both. Yep. Um, and, and so that way, if I only got 15 people, it, it, it kind of varies a little bit. Uh, so for that, yeah. Kabuki Warriors Perfect. for that one. And then. <sighs> oh. This is tough because I'm trying to moneyball too. I don't know if you're going to pick one of these other guys I want. But I really can't lose this one because if you're going pedigree, if you're going history, I got to pick next Daniel Bryan then. Daniel Bryan. Okay. I got to pick Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan, healer face. The people are going to cheer him no matter what. He's one of the yep. best WWE wrestlers of all time. Um, indie people love him. WWE people love him. I, I will say, you just made my next pick very easy. Okay. Oh, no. I'm I, no, 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 no. no, no. I had, I, I'll, I'll say this. Daniel Bryan was ranked higher than my next pick, um, but I was between the two of them. Okay. So I'm, I'm happy about it. Okay. But yeah, Daniel Bryan's a hell of a pick. I yeah. like... Honestly, the best heel they've had in years. That's how I feel, too. And they're too. switching him back to a face, which he's going to be perfect at. His, like, it, and he can get younger talent over. Yeah. He, he can work with other people. He can be a main eventer. He can literally do whatever you want. Also, you want to have a brain like that on your roster and, and just that knowledge. Do you? No, that knowledge of wrestling. <laughs> of wrestling. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the phrasing, Ryan, on that one. You know People what, forget that you know what on I the meant, roster James. kept him off the roster for a while. <laughs> okay. uh, all right, so you're up next. So right now we've got I've got Brock Lesnar, The Fiend, Kabuki Warriors, and Daniel Bryan. You've got Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins, and New Day. I got two two spicy picks though. Getting getting caddy into well, I, like I, it. I got I got a quality pick and then I got a spicy one. Okay. So my fourth pick. Uh, you know what? I just have to go Kevin Owens. I have to. Um, yeah. Best talker in the industry right now. Yeah. By far. Damn. It's we like it's him and then Jericho and Jericho's like fifty. Um, Owens has a g- massive career ahead of him. Matt and he he already has an insane resume. Damn. He was he was inching up my uh, my my pick list yep. there. Okay. Um, at like, I hope they do Owens Lesnar soon enough. Like, I, I feel like they're inching towards it, and I, I need it. Okay. Like, Owens Lesnar is a match I want to happen. Well, it can't happen on your roster because I've got Brock Lesnar, baby. Um, but the next one, I think the next one's going to surprise you okay. because I'm going going a little spicy on this one. Okay. Um, I'm going early. I want Adam Cole. <sighs> okay. <good>. Take him. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Uh, I dude's thirty. So you're um, splitting up undisputed air right, uh, technically right now. Yeah, at least for now. Like here's the thing, Adam. Like people in WWE know Adam as like undisputed era, but like dude can function on his own, and he has every bit of that. Like the my favorite Seth Rollins ever was like greaseball corporate. Yeah, set. he has <laughs> he has every bit of that plus. Okay. Um, at Adam Cole is my heel. For years. Okay. All right. All right. That is my dude that I want leading the bad guy charge for the next 10 years. All right. Well, if we're dipping into the NXT waters, yes. I'm, I'm doing this one now before I lose him, and that's Matt Riddle. I want Matt Riddle on my you're, squad. Go with Matt Riddle early. Yeah. I'm scared you're going to take him, and you already took Adam Cole. Uh, you know and Kevin gonna, Owens. I won't even lie. Matt Riddle, not on my list. I figured he might not be, but I wasn't yeah. sure. Like I said, I was going off resume. The dude has, what, one title match? Yeah, and no, he didn't see, win I'm it. super not going on resume. I'm going on people that I think resonate with with fans and, and fit certain markets. And uh, young, pretty guy who can beat the shit out of anyone, but also kick back and smoke weed and drink with you. Um, to me, that 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 uh, plays to a certain audience. I'm part of that audience of yeah, like you are of like I'm specific. Team Matt Riddle. That's I, yeah. your demographic. Yeah, I, I but I just always thought Matt Riddle could be the guy of a company. And also, if I have Brock Lesnar, I need Matt Riddle so that I can do my long term storyline build of him retiring. Brock Lesnar, so I need both of them on my roster. I can't wait for your number 15 pick to be Goldberg. Uh. <laughs> um, okay, so now... No free agents. Now I need to pick another now, one. Yeah, now you get another one. I want to moneyball things here a little bit so that I'm not picking people that you're necessarily going to pick. Oh. 
I'm very excited for this. I guess you got to go with Charlotte. You yeah, got to go with Charlotte right. Flair. You got to take Charlotte. Yeah, up the board. you got to okay. go with Charlotte Flair. I, I, you took uh, Becky Lynch, so I'm taking Charlotte Flair. I don't think really much explanation needed there. Um, it was either Charlotte Flair or Sasha Banks, and let's be honest, she doesn't want to work with me. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's I'll, I'll pick Charlotte Flair. Okay, so Charlotte's off the board. Oh, okay. Oh, I I, I have a little uh, deciding to do. I'm a little deciding to do. <laughs> Okay, um, you know what? Let's stick with the heels. Okay. Let's stick with the heels because I'm looking at the next two, and age, I have some concerns. One, I have zero concerns about heel-wise, okay. and I'm all for it um, because if you're going to go character, I'm going to go a little bit of resume in there too. I'm going King Corbin. Wow. Yes. Unexpected I'm, pick from James. How is I don't how is that unexpected? I mean top fifteen out of everyone on the entire roster. I like Baron Corbin. They, I'm just surprised. Look at it. They just trusted him with the rock segment. Like, True. The the dude is like call it X Pac Heat, whatever you want. He is a heat magnet. The guy attracts a a reaction. Okay. And he's like people like it's a very weird thing to watch his last two years of work where, like, the year before this one, uh, he was getting better and better and it was fine. And then the last year, he's really honed his game down. And he's become, like, a very steady hand on the roster. Yeah, no, I'm not, and, I'm not disagreeing. And he'll want, oh, God, it's great. No, I'm... I just think, I think there are a lot of people listening right now who, with a lot of people that are on the board right now, would be surprised with that decision. Yeah, I mean, you, you can be... Okay with that. Like, I don't care. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care. It's fine. Um, and then we after that. got a heel-heavy show here. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? Let's go with the face because it's my number four. He's still on the board. Uh, I'm worried if I don't do it now, you're going to take him. Okay. Um, I'm taking Roman. Okay. That's a good call. That's Roman, a good call. He's up, he was the one I was one. I, he's up there on mine for sure. Yeah. Roman across the board. He, like... Very easily, what, top five recognizable names WWE in the past five years? Um, by far, it definitely has the most interesting story out of anyone uh, with the whole, you know, like, not to say it like this, but cancer thing. Mm -hmm. um, no, like, just a very dependable guy on the roster. Obviously, resume fits. And dude has an SB. Fuck it. He's mine. <laughs> Roman Reigns. <laughs> um, all right. I want to diversify my roster a little bit here. Um, I got a lot of white people on my roster, minus the Kabuki Warriors. Yeah, I got New Day early. This yeah, is... yeah. No, you, 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 you're doing good on that department. My, my first pick was a woman, and then I got New Day at number three. You're yeah. doing bad. Yeah, yeah I know. Well, I had Kabuki Warriors got at Kabuki number three. The, yeah, there we go. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm handling it now. I'm adding yep. Samojo. Taking Ooh, Smojo. Okay, very nice. Um, Smojo can work with anyone. Um, he's such a good heel. He's one of my favorite heels. You 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 uh, pointed out King Corbin's heel ability, and I just think, man, that whole AJ Styles feud where he was doing all the Wendy stuff, I just, man, Smojo's a multi-purpose player. And so, yeah, I'm picking Smojo, and I'm picking Andrade because oh. Andrade is awesome. And while he might not be Rey Mysterio in terms of a uh, uh, Mexican fan base, you know, uh, how many fans he currently has, I feel like Andrade is the future. Not going to lie, Andrade was one of my late round steals. Yeah. I, he, I, so I was scared he, that you were going to moneyball him into yours. And if I'm trying to uh, diversify my roster a little bit, um, I can't help but pick Samoa Joe and Andrade, those two. And Andrade comes with Selena Vega, so. Well, like you can't just. <laughs> she come. They come with a package okay, duo. Okay, yeah, I, you yeah. get your keep your manager. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, keep your manager. I that's get Paul. Fine. I have Paul Heyman now too. Yeah, that's true. Oh damn, you do have that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. So now it's my two. Shit. Uh. Let's see. You know what? I only have one woman. I need a counterbalance to Becky. Uh. And I think yeah, you know, I'm dipping back in the NXT pool. Oh. Going Shayna. Ooh. I, I think she was my late she was my last pick in terms of like I didn't think you were gonna pick her. Damn it. Oh no, no, no. I'm one hundred percent I was worried that you were going to take her very early. <laughs> um she's a lot of people forget she's two months away from setting like the most days as NXT women's champion. Like within sixty days she has that. Like Asuka's record's gone. I mean Asuka has a concurrent one, but uh yeah, no, Shayna, beast. 
two times women's champion. Uh, the only, my only thing with Shayna is she's 39, but I don't care. Doesn't I, matter. Yeah, her skill set, she'll, That's she'll like be fine. That's a thing that we have in our mind just because we're so used to hearing that, you know? Yeah. Like, well, WWE things, but, like, who cares? Um, Goldberg's still wrestling. And then after that, uh, you know what? I, I have to take him off the board because he's probably the most exciting person in WWE right now. Okay. Go on Ricochet. I, I have to go ricochet All on right. that one. All right. All right. Um, dude already, like, he was an NXT North American champion. He won the Dusty Tournament. U.S. champion already. Um, and I think sky's the limit with him. So this is great. I got take it ricochet on that one. All right. so what I are we at right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All yep. right. Oh, boy. It's getting tough now. Yeah. There's, there's, there's my little secret pockets that I'm keeping that I don't think you're going to pick, but I'm scared you are going to pick them. So then I you get. Good. Okay. I am going to take him early. Got to take him early. I am going to take next. Natty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to tell you. You're great. <laughs> Next, I am Ooh. taking. <laughs> this is so tough. Sometime within the next century. I'm gonna dude. take next. Uh, Drew McIntyre. Oh, you are uh, okay. That's one that was on my list. Yeah, Drew McIntyre. I'm scared. I'm so scared you're gonna take him. Yeah, no, he was he coming up next. He was, he's he was within my next three. Okay, that's a, that's what I'm looking at. I was looking at it like a math equation over yeah. here. Like shit, which one are you gonna take, James? Okay, we got Brock Lesnar. We got the Fiend. We got Kabuki Warriors. Daniel Bryan, Matt Riddle, Charlotte Flair, Samoa Joe, Andrade, Drew McIntyre, and. I need Velveteen Ooh. Dream. Oh, you son of a bitch. I need him. He's high on my list, and I'm also scared you're going to take him. Yeah, yeah. Drew that, McIntyre, Velveteen Dream. This, so this is another scenario where you just made my next pick very easy. Okay. Um, I'm angry because you took the pick I wanted, but I'm getting someone <laughs> I think is equally as good and has a little bit more staying power. Okay. Uh, so you, you got the charisma side of it. Uh-huh. That, that, is that was why I went for it. I felt like I was a little charisma. I needed some extra charisma in that. Yeah. I needed the character. Undisputable on that one. Um, but I think I have a guy who can also be champion. Okay. I'm taking Pete Dunne. Ooh. All right. All right. Let's get Pete Dunne off the board. Unexpected. Um, we'll tell you this. Was not on my list. Really? No. Was not on my list. Yeah. I mean... Th- yeah, his resume isn't big. One title reign, but it was a 685-day fucking reign. That thing is, that's insanity. And he's 25. No one no one has that. No, no. I, Velveteen's I, there. Velveteen, Velveteen is around that age range at the same time, but a 685-day reign as champion when you're 25, mental. Like, that is a fucking anomaly. My choice of Velveteen Dream was more so because I need a character in the mid-card, to be honest with you. And not like I think he's a forever mid-card guy, but yeah. I need like some mid-card fun character that can kind of fill the middle of my show, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I, I got one more oh pick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ugh, I'm worried. I have a feeling these guys aren't on your list, but I need... My problem is, I A, I need another tag team. Okay. Do you have any tag teams right now? I got New Day. Oh, New Day. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But I need a team to counteract the New Day. I mean, hell, do you have... I don't have any hey, tag teams. you don't even have no. a tag team right mm-hmm. now. So I'm gonna. I'm really fleshing out my tag team division right now. My 11th pick, taking the Revival. All right. All right. Good pick. That's a very good pick. It's a uh, very good pick. Great resume. Great counterbalance to New Day shenanigans. Fantastic. Roster's looking great right now. Very happy. All right. Well, if that way, how many picks do I have one, dude? Five more picks, okay. Um, that's the case. Right, you were counting, and I was like, you don't have ten more picks. <laughs> no, no, no. If that's the case, I am... Five more picks. Pick five tag teams. Picking... Lars Sullivan. I'm picking Viking Raiders. Oh, okay. I'm picking Viking Raiders, and I'm picking Street Profits. Wow, double tag teams. Double tag teams. I don't. You pointed out the lack of tag teams I have. 
Um, and the reason I picked these two teams um, is not only do I think they're they're great teams. I, I'm a big fan of both teams. Um, I think individually as well um, that Ivar Hansen <laughs> that Hansen has potential for single success. I think. If pushed right, once one day when the Viking Raiders are no longer a thing, I think Hansen, whatever is Ivar, I think is he is now. Yeah. Um, I think he's got big potential. He's like can fly around, but he's also a big guy. Um, so that's why I picked them. And same for Street Profits. I think Angelo Dawkins and Montez are both great, but I truly believe that Montez has the ability to become like the top guy of a company. Like he's got so much potential for such a short career and so just, you know he's barely been in the business and he just oozes charisma he has the ability to be like a next rock so yeah um i that's why i picked viking raiders and street profits okay damn double tag team okay well uh let's see let's see do i want to go double nxt that's a lot that is <laughs> that's, that's a lot that's a lot but that could be good I am liking the very, like, wrestling-focused roster I have, whereas the first two picks that you have are guys that, like, show up every two months. <laughs> well, I, su- I supplemented it with the Daniel Bryans and the Matt Riddles and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, love the injury uh, listing. <laughs> um, okay, you know what? Pick 12, he's still there, um, and he's probably one of the more exciting guys in the company right now. Uh, gotta go Gargano. I Ooh, have to. All right. All I right. I gotta take Johnny Gargano. I didn't, I honestly thought you would he's take NXT him. He's NXT for life, though, James. Well, he's now Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I am taking him, and he is on my <laughs> roster. Uh, let's see. You know what? I want, we have a good division there. I do want to flesh out, let's see. You know you know what? Screw it. You know who I'm taking? Oh. I don't even care. Taking The Miz. Ooh, wow. The Miz. If only, you know what? Because US, uh, Raw is on USA and I'm getting Miz and Mrs. Fair. Miz Fair. and Mrs. is staying in the family. Fair. Fuck you. You're not getting Miz and Mrs. out of this. <laughs> uh, that is mine. All right. Well, if you're picking a, 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 a character like that, I'm going one. I'm going Braun Strowman. You're t- okay, you're taking I'm Strowman. taking Strowman, taking him off the board. You're going with that magician gimmick. Yep, so. I'm taking it. Uh, and then I am also going to go with... <sighs> oh, that sigh. Oh, you are conflicted. I'm so conflicted. You are conflicted, my boy. <laughs> to go with Lars Sullivan. Finn Balor. Oh, going Finn. Okay. That's who I'm going with. Finn Balor. He's a people love Finn Balor. People do love Finn Balor. People love him. If I had taken some of my other my last three to choose between, people would have been like, what? You choose that person or Finn Balor? So fine, Finn Balor. Former Universal Champion. I like it. Okay, so I'm I'm now at my final two picks. Right? The final three ooh, picks. Ooh. So you're at your final two, and I only have one left? Yep, you only have oh, one. Oh, no, yep. final two. Ah. Okay. Don't worry, I don't think I'm taking any of yours, okay, though. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, because there was one I really wanted, and there's one that I don't give a shit. It's going to be funny and will win me internet points, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, first one, uh, spicy pick, but I don't care, because I think she has Velveteen Dream potential. Oh, no. I'm taking Rhea Ripley. Oh, that's not what I thought you were going to say. All right, all right. Um... Homegirl turns 23 literally tomorrow. Like, she is already a monster. Um, I think if they book her correctly, that, like, you have the next 15 to 20 years locked. That is mental. All right. I um, like it. I like so I'm it. I'm taking Rhea Ripley. All right. And last? Uh, and the final pick. Uh, because I asked you earlier. <laughs> I texted you specifically where I was like, hey... Free agents? No, not free agents. Free agents are off the board. It was more oh, yeah, of, yeah. hey, if someone has an injury. Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, you were like, yeah, injury's fine. That's because I wanted one person. You are being sneaky with this question? Not being sneaky at all. Not being sneaky at all. 
Guy has an injury. He's going to come back eventually. Roll the world. Motherfucker, I'm taking Jinder Mahal off the board. <laughs> Fine. 33, the best Indian who's technically from Canada. <laughs> he is a heavyweight champion, Ryan. I thought you were about to pick someone I was just like, I hadn't thought of because they've been injured, but they're technically still under contract. Nope. All Jinder right. Mahal. That's fine. Jinder Mahal <laughs> is my final pick. He is a former champion, Ryan. Former no, no, champion. No hate on Jinder Mahal. No, no hindering Jinder, you son of a bitch. All right. My last three. Ryan's last pick. So, names Lars I had. Sullivan. Like, the three that I'm really choosing between here. For It uh, doesn't even... Well, you, you got to build the suspense. You have to let us know the two that you're not picking. Here's the... Five that fell by the wayside. Oh, it was Matt Hardy. What? Let, what? Dude, that fell by the wayside. I said that that not being picked. Okay. Matt Hardy, Chad Gable, Candice LeRae, Randy Orton, and Rey Mysterio. Those are five that, if I could, in my supplemental draft, I'd bring them over. But they just didn't make those are my backups. I, I will let you know that on my ranking sheet because I definitely skipped a bunch based on the list and where we were going. I will let you know the remainders of mine. Okay. Uh, ranked number nine, I had AJ Styles. Okay. Oh, how did we not? Oh, my God. Neither of us did AJ Styles? No. Shit. But Shit. He, here's the thing. I left him off because he's 42. Okay. All right. Yeah. All I, right. Like, he's he's good, but we were we were skewing a little bit younger, and you were already taking, like, to be blunt, you had, like, Brock right, right off the bat where I was like, okay, well, he's got the older crowd. Um, <laughs> Uh, nine was AJ. Fifteen, I had Randy. Okay. So Orton was there. Um, Eighteen, I had Alexa Bliss. But I decided to go with the NXT heels, which yeah. is fine. Um, she's also a lot of injuries, and she's maybe transitioning to uh, not. Twenty-six was Shinsuke. Ooh, good one. And uh, twenty-eight was Cesaro. Yeah, I, I'm that out of my top thirty. It's sad that he's fallen so far that he's not on either of our fifteen because he's so good and he should be on. I, I didn't even have him as one of my backup. He's so good, but, but it's he, hard to put him over the likes of some of these other people who are just crushing it right now. Thirty-eight, the resume is not there. Like, yeah, yeah. He's, so he, Bianca Belair is falling by the wayside. Okay, I really want to be on Bianca, the list. She's she was one of my top that's being saved right now. Okay. The two that I'm, you, I almost By the way, added AJ people, Styles. People who are listening, I hope you're ready for the three-hour supplemental draft we have next week. <laughs> uh, um, I, you, you mentioned AJ Styles, maybe realize I should have put him on my list, but now you have talked me out of it. So, my final two are that I'm debating between are Walter and Alistair Black. Oh. <sighs> I mean, if I could be honest, I mean, out of the two, I would pick Walter. See, here's I, my thing, though. If I pick Walter, I don't necessarily get Imperium because you don't get the whole stable. No, you do not. And but do Alice, you need Imperium? I guess not. You got the music. You got the whole thing. You got the track suit. I will say. You can make a new have, Imperium. You have a very husky boy roster. Yeah, I like the big tough I, boys. Like, I like go, the big tough men. Let's go over the husky boys you have on your roster. You have Brock. We have the Fiend. We have Samoa Joe. We have the Viking Raiders. Drew, I'll loop in there. We have Braun, and then we would have Walter. You know what? It's a very 305 live roster we have. You're right. Uh, I do got a lot of big boys on there already. 305, just turn SmackDown into 305 live. You just convinced me. Final pick, AJ Styles. Oh. Look at, look at you, like, stealing that pick at the end. Well, you shouldn't have told me. I got to moneyball AJ Styles till the end. That's pretty good. Whatever. I got gender out of it. <laughs> And everyone remembers their classic feud, Jinder Mahal and AJ Styles. So great. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the finals, are, we'll start with James. Okay. He's got we'll, Monday we'll Night go Raw. Over the better Team Raw. The, the Team Raw that will show up every episode instead of Brock and The Fiend. Uh, number one and two picks, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. They're engaged. They love each other. Uh, number three pick, <laughs> The New Day. Number three pick is three people at once. Keep that in mind. That's value people. Uh, there is Kevin Owens, the best talker in the industry. Adam Cole, no undisputed error, but he is still incredible. King Corbin, he he brings a cape. That right there is worth weight in gold. Roman Reigns, he beat cancer. How are you going to vote against that? Uh, Shayna Baszler, uh, the submission magician, got to love her. Ricochet, uh, he's not from this planet. It's great. Uh, Pete Dunne, strong boy. 
Uh, we have the revival that is pretty much a '70s gimmick, and I love them so much. Johnny Gargano, the real best bout machine, instead of whatever the fuck Kenny Omega is now. Uh, you got the Miz, Miz and Miss. How are you going to vote against Miz and Misses? You can't. You, you technically get Maurice out of that deal once every six months too. So you got Rhea Ripley, the best up and coming woman in that division, and you have one of the greatest WWE champions. Of all time, I say that with no irony, Jinder Mahal. All right, that's James' Monday that's Night Raw. Raw right that's there. Team Raw. And for me, SmackDown, the trash A show, friend. trash friend f- on Fox. Uh, we got Brock Lesnar. He will be there once every four months with Paul Heyman. Uh, we've got The Fiend, who is one of the hottest things in professional wrestling. Have fun at watching the moment. pre-taped segments. Hey. I let you get through all of yours. And that was your fault. Hyping them up. Uh, Brock Lesnar, who is one of the biggest draws in professional wrestling and is way more hated of a heel than King Corbin at the moment. We've got The Fiend, who is one of the top villains. Or sorry, one of the top things in wrestling right now. We've got Kabuki Warriors, which is Asuka, who has probably... Uh, there's nobody, who, a female wrestler, who has a pedigree like Asuka right now in terms of uh, how many wins that she has compared to I'm not going to lie, else. that's a great fucking pick. It's uh, 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 a great number three pick. You got Kyrie Sane, who is an up-and-comer that people love. You got Daniel Bryan, who is one of the most beloved WWE wrestlers of all time, but also can second as one of the most hated heels in WWE at the moment. You got Matt Riddle, the up-and-comer, who wants to take down Brock Lesnar for good Finally, built-in storyline right there. You're going you got to break this table. You got it's okay. It's sturdy. You got Charlotte Flair, who has is a ten-time women's champion. You got Samoa Joe, who you have loved for decades. You've got Andrade with Zelina Vega, one of the top up-and-coming talents in the world. You've got Drew McIntyre, who is the physical specimen of what you'd want a man to the look Scottish like. The Scottish psychopath. Yes, Scottish yeah, psychopath. He's... You got Velveteen Dream, who is one of the most one of the best characters in wrestling at the moment. People people love Velveteen Dream. Uh, you got Viking Raiders and Street Profits, two dope tag teams. You got Braun Strowman, the monster among men, and you got Finn Balor and AJ Styles, Bullet Club in the house. Uh, pretty simple pick, if you had to ask me. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Team Raw is so much better. Uh, so while we were doing this, I decided in my head, what I'm going to do is I, I will base it on, uh, I, I, I will do a thread of who's got what, and I'll put a few pictures in there, and I'll have our full list or something like that. Um, and then at the bottom of it, we'll add a, a, a poll. If you can, I, I don't know if you can reply with a poll option, though. If not, it's just going to be the likes. I don't think you can reply. Like I don't think in a thread you can add the bottom of a thread to vote. I think you have to add it in the first one. So, okay. well. But I guess the first one could be to vote, and then I thread it with who's got what. Yeah. So it's going to be like that. That's probably what I'll do, actually. Yeah, that, that's what I'll do. Um, I mean, whichever way you would like to find out you lost is okay by me. <laughs> uh, James, where can people find you on the internet? Oh, people can find me at Chill Hartman everywhere. You can just type that into the internet browser, and then I come up, and you can talk to me, and it's fine. Easy enough. And you should hope now that James lives in L.A. We'll hopefully be seeing him more on all of these various TV shows. Uh, I'm Ryan Satin, at Ryan Satin on social media. ProWrestlingSheet.com, that's where you can find all the top stories in the world of professional wrestling throughout the week. YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet, that's where you can find the video of this show. It's where you can find our Raw recap. It's where you can find all the interviews that I did at the Performance Center last week. Like I said, did one with Triple H, Candice LeRae, Johnny Gargano, Bianca Belair, uh, The Undisputed Era, Street Profits, a bunch of people. Matt Riddle. Yeah, don't I was going to say, you out. left out the I guy know, on the, your team. I know. Matt Riddle. Uh, <laughs> make sure you guys go check out those interviews. Lots of good stuff there. While you're there, like the video, subscribe. It helps out a lot. Uh, but if you just want to listen to the audio of all these things, make sure you check us out on your favorite podcast platform and by searching Wrestling Sheet Radio. Okay, that's it. We're done. Officially tapping out for now. Until next time, stay out of the dirt and keep your eye on the sheet.